Today I'll be teaching the game 1846, the race for the Midwest. The second thing that the corporation may do is it may lay track. And if you look here, you will see that we have track. We have track in four different colors. We have yellow track, we have green track, we have brown track, and we have gray track. And those four colors of track represent a progressive sequence of more and more complicated track. You can see that the yellow track tiles, which go in these hexagons, have a pretty simple track. There's plain track, there's track with cities on them, there's even track that have cities with Z's marked on them, and finally, not in the yellow but in other colors, you have some track tiles for Chicago. And the way that you build networks in this game is you lay track tiles on the board. Now if you look at this board, you will see that there are some hexagons that are already marked with yellow track to give you a start. Uh, there are also some hexagons marked with gray track. The general sequence of this game is that you start in the beginning of the game by laying yellow track on the board on some of these tan spaces. Later on, you can replace a yellow track with a green track or replace a pre-printed yellow hex and cover it with a green track. Then you can replace green with brown and brown with gray. Gray is the final color and as a result, you can never replace a gray tile. Uh, even the ones that are pre-printed on the board, they're going to stay the way they are uh, for the whole game. In order to lay track, and I'm going to use as an example the New York Central here because it's a, a, a company that has a number of options that we can illustrate. Let's imagine that the New York Central has floated and therefore has had its home token laid in Erie. I will tell you that there's one of the charts in the GMT rules that suggests that Cleveland is the home station of the New York Central. That's a typo. The New York St Central starts in Erie. And in order to lay track, a corporation must be able to trace uh, from one of its stations on the board to the track that you want to lay. So the New York Central could not place a tile here because there's no connection from its station. However, the New York Central could place a track here because you can trace from the station onto the track of that yellow tile. Or it could place the track here. Or it could place the track a number of other ways. But you can imagine that the New York Central, in keeping with its desire to head toward the west, might see Cleveland as a good place to go. And so it might place a track here to head toward Cleveland. You'll see that some of the spaces on the board are cities. And some of them are even cities with Z's on them. There are three Z cities, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Detroit. And um, you must place um, plain track without cities must go on plain spaces. If I wanted to place a Z tile here, I might place it here. Notice that I could still place this tile because I can trace from a station of the New York Central uh, to the tile that I'm trying to lay so that it goes track. What I could not do, I could not place this like this because I can't trace from the station that I have to this track. This would be an illegal play for the New York Central uh, as I've depicted it. Another rule about track is track uh, can never be placed in such a way that the track, any of the track on the tile you're laying uh, goes to an impossible spot. So for example, you could not place this tile here because this track would be going into a lake. Uh, tracks going into lakes is not a good idea. You could also not place a tile uh, that went into um, a gray tile here uh, that cannot be uh, one of the gray pre-printed tiles. You could also uh, not place a track that goes into one of the uh, red areas that doesn't have a connection error. So you certainly can place track Let's say we have the Illinois Central that places one track here and then connects to here. It certainly could place this track because it connects to St. Louis. You can see that black arrow. But it would be illegal to place the track uh, going like that because there's no connection in St. Louis. So the track that you place, all of the, uh, the tile that you place, all the track coming out of it may not go uh, into the ocean, may not go into the dead side of a gray pre-printed space, I cannot go into a dead side of a red space, and finally, I cannot go off the board. So if we were laying track, for example, from here, 
uh, we could not play a track that goes here off the board. That does not mean that you have to satisfy all the connections on neighboring hexes. So notice that the first example I gave was to show you the New York Central placing here. There is track in Salamanca and there is track in Homewood that does not connect to the track that you just laid. There's no requirement to satisfy connections for track on other hexes. What you must do is make sure the track on the hex that you lay um, does not point in an illegal direction. A company can lay one or two track tiles uh, in its turn. Uh, each track tile that you place, um, you must pay $20 for it, unless there's a different price, but in general $20. So if the New York Central Railroad were operating, it could play this track tile for $20, and then it could play this track tile for $20. You'd pay $40 to the bank, and you would have built uh, this, um, this track and you would be on your way to the Midwest. Now I'll observe that there are, as I said, Z cities and Z tiles, and the Z tiles must be placed on the Z cities, and the Z cities may only have Z tiles be placed on them. The Z cities tend to be worth more than the non-Z cities. So if I were to show you a play non-Z tile that looks just like this, you see that this one um, has a revenue value of only $20. Uh, the revenue value is, involves how much the company is going to earn if it runs to that city. You see that Erie has a revenue value at the beginning of only $10, but if you place a Z city here, it's worth $40. That's better. If you're going to play a track tile in Columbus, uh, you would have to use a plain one. And then finally, uh, Chicago is an unusual spot. Uh, the only tiles you can place on Chicago are Chicago tiles. There's one green one, one brown one, and one gray one, and those have to be used in Chicago, and Chicago may not receive any other tiles. So this is how um, you lay track. While we're in phase one of the game, and the game starts in phase one, you may only use yellow tiles, and you may place two each turn. However, once the game has moved to phase two, and I'll explain how that happens, green track will be available and you can upgrade track. To upgrade track, you either remove a tile of one color, in this case yellow, and you replace it with a better, so to speak, tile uh, of the next color, green. Or you take a hex that had pre-printed yellow track on it and you place a green track there. It's the same rules with a little bit of an exception. So let me um, show you how you would place a green tile in Erie uh, if we have already moved to phase two. To place a tile in a place of a tile that was already there, um, you must preserve all the track that was there. So you see that this Erie hex already has track going off to the northeast, to the west, and the southwest. You must place a tile, if you place one, that has track going to the northeast, to the west, and the southwest. So you could remove the token had placed this tile and put the token back, and now you've upgraded Erie to green. You see that that gives you more types of track coming out. You've now added track going to the east that you didn't have before, and you've also added to the revenue value of this tile. You may also upgrade Erie uh, to this configuration. Notice you don't have to satisfy this off-board. This still has track going to the northeast, to the west, and the southwest. This would be another legal placement. What you cannot do is you could not place, for example, this K tile because you had track going to the west, and if you place this K tile this way, you would no longer have track going to the west. That would be illegal. You might say to me, well, Eric, you could place the K tile like this. That would still be illegal because you used to have track going to the northeast and you no longer have track going to the northeast. You might look at this and say, well, if you place the K tile this way, you've satisfied northeast, west, and southwest, but this has track going into the lake. You're not allowed to place tiles with track going into a lake or one of those other places. So the K tile cannot be placed in Erie, uh, no matter how you wiggle it around. But part of the decision you make as a player in the game is if you're going to place a green tile in Erie, do you place the X tile or do you place 
the peace sign tile, and it might depend on what your plans are. You get to decide that. Let's say you place the X. So that is um, how track laying goes. One or two uh, placements. I will add that um, it is possible to play a yellow tile and then upgrade it in the same turn. So for example, imagine that the New York Central had this um, configuration. It could pay $20 to place this tile, and then it could uh, pay another $20 to replace this tile with a green tile. That would be a legal play. So you may place two tiles during your turn, but at most one of them can be an upgrade. At least one of two, if you play two tiles, at least one of them must be yellow, uh, a plain uh, tile. That is track lane. In addition to track laying, at the same time you may place new stations. Now stations are used for a number of things in this game. One thing we use stations for is as a basis for laying track. You already saw that. But we also use stations as a basis for running routes with our trains. And um, we use stations as a basis for placing other stations, which I'm about to explain. And the fourth thing we use stations for is to get in the way of other players' corporations. To place a station, first of all, you must have a station on your charter still available to be used. Secondly, you must find an open city space in which you're allowed to place that station. In this case, we've built track to Cleveland. We could place a station in Cleveland. Third, we must have a connection from the station, a station that you already had to the place that you want to place the station. In this case, you would place it here. You take the station off your charter, you place it in the new location, and it costs you $80 from the company's treasury, paid the bank to the bank, uh, to place this station. I will mention that during the operating round, with one exception that I'll explain later, the players may never use their own cash to accomplish anything. Uh, the company treasury must supply all the funds. And in fact, in this game, you must always keep the treasuries of any companies that you are the president of separate from your own money. Uh, for this very reason. You might very well want to use your own $80 to place that station, but if the company doesn't have $80, uh, it's not going to place the station, no matter how badly you want it to happen. So there is a second station. Notice that you can place two tiles, one or two tiles, and you may lay a station uh, during the company's operating round turn. Uh, you may do that in any order. You may lay two tiles and then place a station. Or you may place a station and then lay two tiles. Or you may place a tile and then place a station and then place another tile. You can do those things in any order. Uh, and you have to pay for them uh, in, in, in each case. There are a number of companies, I want to explain this, including the Illinois Central that we've explained, um, that have special powers involving stations. I'm going to explain that at the end when I talk about the individual companies in detail. So the next thing that you do in your turn is you run a route with a train. It kind of makes sense that first you build track and lay stations to enable yourself to have routes, and then you run routes. And um, we haven't looked at the trains yet, but there are trains here available. There are four different colors of trains. It's the same four colors as there are track tiles. And in phase one, the trains that are available are phase one trains. They're all the same. Um, they are all two trains. They're colored yellow so that you know that they're used in phase one, and they cost $80. Now, you might ask, how does my company get a train? Well, it buys one. But in operating round order, first it runs routes and earns revenue, and then it may buy a train. As a result of this, in the very first operating round of the game, none of the companies, none of the corporations have trains, and so they're not going to be able to run trains. But later in the game, let's imagine that we bought a train. And let's imagine that the New York Central Railroad has a two train. I'm going to get out the charter here. I've already shown you the Illinois Central. But I'm going to get the New York Central charter. Put it here. When you buy a train, you place it here in the train area. And a two train or any other train with a single number, a green four train, a brown five train, or a gray six train, uh, may run a route of that number of locations in consecutive order, extending in one or both directions from one of its stations. 
So if you look here, we see that the New York Central could run a route from Erie, where it has a station, to Cleveland. It doesn't matter whether there's a station in Cleveland or not. Uh, even if it just has a station in Erie, it could run from Erie to Cleveland. And those are two cities, so that's the capacity of a two train. It can run two cities. It doesn't really matter how far those cities are apart from each other. Uh, these cities have one plane track in between them, but you could have multiple plane tracks between two cities. Uh, for example, you could run from Detroit to Chicago as long as those two cities were adjacent to each other along your track. So let me show you that um, if you had a company, let's take the New York Central and imagine that it had a station here and imagine that it had built track here. Then Detroit and Chicago would be two cities and you could run this route. However, if instead we had built this track, then you could not run from Detroit to Chicago with a two train because there's three cities. You could run from Detroit to South Bend, but not all the way to Chicago with a two train. If you had a station in Chicago, you could also run from Chicago to South Bend with a two train. If you had a four train, then you could run four cities in a row. For example, if I look like this, you could run one, two, three, four, four cities in a row with a four train. It doesn't matter whether the cities are next to each other or some distance apart. Uh, it's the number of cities that, matches, man, that matters. When you run a route with a train, um, the revenue of one of these trains with a plane number is simply the sum of the revenues of each of the locations. So if you run here from Erie to Cleveland, the revenue of that train would be 70. If you ran from uh, Detroit here to South Bend, the revenue would be 60. Often, this may surprise people that are new to the game, it's better to skip cities because um, you may find that you have better revenue uh, by skipping cities. So example, if I had been able to upgrade Chicago to green, then going with a single two train from Detroit to Chicago would earn me a revenue of 80. Whereas if South Bend were in the way, I could only earn 60 this way or 60 that way. It wouldn't be as good as running a single two train. Let me do a little bit more imaginary track building. Let's say the New York Central um, decides that it's going to upgrade Cleveland and play another track tile there. Notice that, ignoring all this other track, the New York Central um, could lay this tile and the yellow tile here in one of its operating rounds, and then another operating round, it could upgrade this and lay this here. And thereby, we would have two separate routes from Erie to Cleveland. A two train could run from here to here. No train may use the same track twice. Not usually a problem, but no train may count the same revenue location twice. So the train counts Erie and Cleveland that's two cities. However, if you have more than one train, um, those trains can both run. Let's imagine the New York Central has a pair of two trains. Um, those trains may not share track, but they may share revenue locations. So if you have two two trains, one two train could run along this route from Erie to Cleveland for a revenue of 60, and the other two train could run along this route from Erie to Cleveland also for a revenue of 60 with those two two trains the company could run for a revenue of 120. I'm going to go a little further. Suppose the New York Central had three two trains. Uh, then it could run for 60 and 60, and it could also run from Erie to the soft board. You see this, this arrow, and this off board is worth 30 in phase one. You see the brown 60. Once we get to phase three, uh, Buffalo will be worth 60, but for now it's worth 30. So with three two trains, you could run for 60 and 60 and 40. That would be 160. That would be even better. Uh, let's continue with the madness. Suppose Erie was able to, New York Central, sorry, was able to upgrade Erie. And now we have for three two trains, 80, 80, and 60 for 220. And finally, let's imagine that it has a fourth two train. It could run 80, 80, 60, and 60 
uh, for $280 in revenue, which would be a lot. I can't make it go any further uh, because, um, as we're going to explain, no company can ever own more than four trains. And so that's as far as it could go. But you can see how even at the beginning of the game, uh, a corporation can run multiple trains. And notice that in this example, all four trains used the same station in Erie going out in four different directions. Every route of a company that it runs must uh, include uh, a token either in the middle of its route or at one end of the route or the other. A couple of rules about running trains. You can never uh, visit the same revenue location twice. So imagine that we had, and I'm not going to go into this in detail, but imagine that we had a, a, a token uh, here, and imagine that we had built track like this. You might say, well, I can run a train from Chicago to this other city in Chicago, uh, but you're not allowed to use in the same route the same revenue location twice, and that would, uh, it would violate the rule to run from the same hex to the same hex with one train. Uh, that's not allowed. Another rule is that no train may include two east locations. You haven't, I haven't uh, uh, drawn your attention to these yet, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven off boards that have E. Those are east locations, and they head toward the eastern cities that these railroads came from. These two locations, Windsor and Sarnia, are in Canada. Uh, this represents the fact that when the New York Central Railroad closed off New York by political pressure to the Boston Railroads, the Boston Railroads uh, made their way through Canada by buying a Canadian railroad, the Grand Trunk. And uh, so these are also routes to the east. However, no tr uh, company can run from east to east. So imagine that uh, we redraw the picture and imagine that um, the New York Central had been able to lay this here, uh, this tile here. And um, imagine that the New York Central said, well, if I had a four train, I could run a route of length four, one, two, three, four. And uh, that would sound like it might be a workable idea, but both of these spaces are east. And uh, in this game, um, any passengers wanting to travel from Buffalo to Binghamton uh, are not going to head onto this board. They're going to do that off board. So you can never run a route from an east to an east. There are two west locations on these red off boards. Uh, you may run from west to west. So you could run from Chicago Connections to St. Louis, but you may never run uh, from east to east. There are also two that are neither east nor west, Holland and Louisville, you can run to those uh, as you like. Um, another rule is that a train may never backtrack. And to give you an example of what I mean by backtracking, uh, I'm going to use this tile here. So imagine that um, you had built track that looked like this. You would have had to lay a yellow tile, and let's say you upgraded that yellow tile. And now let's imagine that you laid track here and you have a two train. Um, you might think you could run from here to here, but this involves reversing directions, not at a city, but at a sharp intersection on a tile. Um, this is called backtracking. You may never trace track uh, in this direction, whether it's for the purpose of running a train or for the purpose of laying more track or for the purpose of placing tokens. So in fact, if the New York Central were here, it could not even lay this tile this way because in order to lay a new tile, you must be able to trace uh, to some of the track on the new tile that's being laid, and you could not do that with the backtracking. I have to also tell you about um, another rule, which is that when you're upgrading, uh, not only must you be able to trace to the track um, on the tile, but for a non-city tile, you must be able to trace to some of the new track on the tile. So imagine that I'd already laid a tile here and a tile here. I could lay this tile here because here's some new track on the tile and I can trace to it from my train. But I cannot lay this tile here because if I go from here, I would have to backtrack to reach that track and I must be able to re reach that new tile. Uh, some of the new track on the tile in order to lay it. There's an exception for cities, and let me explain that using Chicago as an example. 
there's Chicago, and if we wanted to upgrade that later in phase three to brown, here is the brown Chicago tile. Uh, you will notice that there's no new track on the Chicago tile. It just increases the revenue very nicely from 40 to 70. So if the rule said that in order to uh, lay a tile, I have to be able to trace to some of the new track, you would never be able to place this tile. If you have a city tile, regardless of the circumstances, you may always uh, reach that tile for the purpose of an upgrade as long as you reach any of the track on that tile or any of the cities on that tile. That would be a legal upgrade, despite the fact that there is no new track. To determine the revenue of a route, as I mentioned, you add the cities that are on it. Um, we had an example before. Let's make this example here. Um, if we had a four train, we could run a route one, two, three, four, all consecutive, and we would add up 30 plus 20 plus 40 plus 10 would be $100. With a four train, uh, this route would, would be worth $100. But let me imagine that we had upgraded a little further and that we had the following situation here. And we have a token. Now we could run one, two, three, four. That would be 40 and 50 and 40 and 20. And that's $150. However, it would be better than that because there's a rule giving bonuses from east to west runs. Notice that Windsor here is an east. Chicago Connections here is a west. And if you have a route that scores both an east and a west with the same train, in addition to the normal revenue, you get to add the plus numbers and the arrows on both ends. So this route running with a four train would be worth 40 and 50 and 40 and 20 if we're in the uh, phase two. That would be 150 plus 50 and 30 for the east-west bonus would be 230. And that's a lot of revenue for one train. A couple of other points that I want to make. One is that this Chicago tile, all the Chicago tiles, they all have their track funneled down to a single piece of track here. Um, you may only use, as I mentioned, each piece of track once, no matter how many trains you're running. So a company can run to Chicago Connections as long as it has a route, but the New York Central could not run another train through to Chicago Connections uh, coming in some other direction because those two trains would have to use the same route. It is possible to have more than one train running to Chicago, but not on to Chicago Connections.